Hello, um, so I'm Deborah Kane of Deborah Kane Art and here is my explanation of relative tone. Um, so this is the explanation that I've been giving to people for nearly um, 40 years and um, I'm putting it out on YouTube. Um, so if you like um, what you see, um, please give us a like and subscribe. Um, and I will be making lots more little videos like this um, explaining the basic principles um, that underpin my art classes, which you can find at www.debracaneart.com. So let's get on with relative tone. Um, and relative tone comes back to our primal recognition system. So your million year old self, your primal self, still believes that it's living in the forest and it's responding to things as if you were skipping along the forest path with light coming from above and things getting darker below. So you still believe you're walking through the forest and as you skip through the forest you come up against a big stone in the middle of the path in front of you and you identify that that stone is solid and it's in front of you because it's lighter on the top and it progressively gets darker as it gets um, as you as it gets to the bottom. And because you have identified that relationship between dark and light and you haven't broken your foot on the stone, there's a little endorphin reward that goes off in your brain and that goes well done. You've identified the visual relationship we live to skip for another day, good work. You know, good work, it says to you. Um, and this is the fundamental game that we're playing when we're looking at art. We're looking at these tonal relationships and we're shuffling, we're over-processing visual information. The dog doesn't do it that way. The cat doesn't do it that way. They have other ways of navigating their environment. But as a human being, your, your vision isn't actually that good. But your mechanism for processing that visual information is absolutely huge. And so your brain is a supercomputer that is re reshuffling and rearranging all of those things that you see. And that leads us to be using that faculty, that ability to process visual information just for pleasure. We're searching for that endorphin shot and we like looking at stuff because we have an enormous ability to process visual information. And at its very, very fundamental, simplest point, that's all that art is about. And actually, that's all that you've come to an art class um, for that's what you've come to enjoy and so the simplest thing you can do is get to get your tones right so um let's have a look at it i hope some of you are thinking to yourself well i'm sure she's not right um you know is this just about processing visual information i can demonstrate for you right from the start um, that you are processing um, everything in tones by showing you a picture of the tumbling blocks quilt, which I'm going to magically sort of, you know, waft across your screen right now when I edit this video. Um, and this is, um, this shows you that you've got a light tone, a dark tone and a mid tone, and you shuffle that visual information immediately into a... Um, set of um, cubes. You see that as being three-dimensional. It's not three-dimensional, it's completely flat, but you completely um, understand that, that it, you, you inter immediately interpret, you understand that information as being three-dimensional. And everybody on the planet has the mechanism that does that. Um, and if you go to, you know, an art class, they'll tell you all this theory about how light comes from the top right hand side and that the shadows that you create have to be illuminated and that it all has to come from a logical illumination point and all of that. And I'd say, no, um, really, you don't need to bother with all of that because the supercomputer is trying to shuffle that visual information um, and trying to make sense and reason of it 
regardless of um, whether the light source is coming from one direction. Um, indeed, in the modern world, um, light is coming from everywhere. We live in a super illuminated world where, um, you know, light comes from the windows. We've got reflective surfaces. We've got all these lights everywhere. In the place that I'm here at the moment, this is my, um, you know, this is my um, sort of um, room in my house. I've got all those twinkly, sparkly lights on the top. Um, so light isn't coming from just one place. Oh, you can see reflections of them in the um, painting at the back, look. You can see the reflection of all the lights there. So um, in the modern world, light isn't coming from one place. And yet we can make sense of it. I do say that I always give a lovely anecdote in my classes at this point when I'm talking to people about this, that whenever I've had an office, not been very often, folks, I always seem to have shared with somebody who said they were allergic to electric light. And I have managed to be compassionate towards them because I have understood that what they're really saying, nobody's allergic to electric light, are they? But what they're saying is they experience a sense of primal confusion if there are too many light sources over a long period of time. And I would suggest that maybe lots of us do actually, when we're indoors, we're going a little bit we go a little bit crazy doing it and it could be because we have so many um, light sources. So um, that's um, the theory of um, relative tone. The next way that I could prove to you that um, we don't have to have light coming from one light source is could you fall, fall over on the path, on the forest path, and still identify that that um, um, so that rock in front of you was solid. Yes, you could. You can turn the tumbling blocks quilt um, pattern on its side and you still see it as three dimensional. So you can be standing on your head and you will compute light, dark and mid-tone into something that's three dimensional. And so, you know, what's the conclusion of all of this? The conclusion is that you only need to include your tones in a drawing and the viewer will make some sort of sense and reason out of it. You don't need to get your tones right. You don't need to get your tones graded. You just need to have light, dark and mid-tone in your drawing. It is that simple. And the thing that people always forget is the light tone. So they do a beautiful tonal drawing and they fill everything in. I've done it myself. You know, you get the pencil out or the piece of charcoal out. Oh, it's just so delicious, isn't it? And you just keep filling in, filling in and you forget to include your light tone. And then nothing you can do to that drawing will make it um, actually create that trigger because the mind can tell it, the supercomputer is using the reference point. It's using, it's seeing something that's really dark and then it looks to the thing that's really light and it shuffles everything else in between into the mid-tone. And more about that when we go on to talk about the grayscale. But if you haven't got the light tone there, you won't get an endorphin shot because you haven't quite used that piece of your primal faculties. Um, so um, the trick is to preserve some white tone and I think I repeat that a million times in my course notes and I tell you what over my teaching career I have said preserve your white tones a gazillion times. If there's one thing that you need to know um, in drawing it's to preserve your white tones. Um, so that is the theory of um, relative tone for you. Um, enjoy. If you're look, watching this as part of First Steps in Pen and Ink, um, enjoy your um, tonal exercise that we're just about to do. I think we're just about to draw an apple if you're doing First Steps in Pen and Ink. But if you're not doing First Steps in Pen and Ink, um, I'm sure this is still very useful information for you. Um, please do um, like and subscribe. Um, and um, you can find me on www.debracainart.com. OK, thanks for watching.